Hello, everybody. It's Russ Kenzie, or you're a slip and fall guy, uh, here again to talk about matters of safety. Uh, today's program is going to focus on something that many of you have seen, may specify, may use, may walk on all the time, and that's diamond plate, diamond metal plating. And of course, it gets the name diamond plate from its diamond pattern surface. Uh, it has these little sharp edges uh, on the surface, and the concept is that when you walk on it, it kind of bites into the bottom of your shoe and you're not going to slip. Uh, you see this a lot on uh, industrial applications uh, of all type, ramps. Uh, even the fire department uses a lot of diamond plate. And this particular type is one that is specified by uh, fire departments. It's used on fire trucks all across the country. But surprisingly, diamond plate is really not a very good or I should say slip resistant material, uh, given that its nature um, is that it was designed for the complete opposite purpose. Uh, if you look back about 100 years ago, diamond plate was used for the materials handling industry. They actually applied diamond plating onto um, uh, surfaces whereby workers would slide boxes or slide equipment along an assembly line or a, a packaging line. And because of the raised surface, it would reduce the amount of surface contact and it would cause objects to slide quite easily. A uh, second industry that picked it up was in the um, railroad industry, where they used diamond plating on bridges and railroad decks as a means of protecting the wooden platforms from uh, tire or wheel wear, because back then, uh, all railroads had steel wheels. They didn't have rubber tires at the time, and they still do. And so there was a lot of traffic uh, going over wooden platforms, wooden, wooden decks, or um, wooden... Um, bridges. And so diamond plating was the reason uh, that they used that type of product to protect the wooden plank. So there's a history of diamond plate that um, needs to be discussed and, and really its limitations. Uh, a lot of folks will use diamond plate uh, in, in applications where it's really not desired um, to be used, meaning it simply doesn't work very well. And talk to anyone that's ever worked on, uh, on a delivery truck or a loading dock uh, where diamond plate is widely used. And when that becomes wet, uh, they'll be the first ones to tell you how very, very slippery diamond plating uh, can become. So there are al alternatives to diamond plate. And, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, joining me is Bill Davidson, the CEO of Slipknot, who manufactures a competitive product to diamond plate. And one that I would say is far more advanced in terms of technology. Uh, Bill, welcome to the show. Thanks, Russ. Glad to be here. Diamond plate. Uh, you know a little bit about that, don't you? Um, I do. I do. I have uh, some some specific stories I can tell and uh, realize that you're absolutely right. Uh, diamond plate causes more accidents, slip and fall injuries than it prevents. In what way? What, 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 are you, what applications, I should say, are you seeing this type of uh, problem in? So the challenge with uh, diamond plate, Russ, is that it, it, has very, uh, it actually has less uh, areas of contact. So when you stand on it and it's uh, wet or oily, um, you have a less opportunity per, to prevent the fall because you have uh, less surface area. So as an example, we had one client who had three diamond plate platforms uh, with uh, diamond plate stairs. And in 2020, they had 19 slip and falls, two uh, recordable, one very serious. And prior to installation of our product in 2021, they had six more incidents since they've installed um, uh, slip knot, they've had zero. And the reason is because uh, it's the difference in technology. It really is a design to handle uh, oils and greases as well as moisture um, to not lower the coefficient of friction, whether it's wet or dry. So how do you do that? What's, what's kind of explain to the audience what slip knot is? So slip knot is a metal on metal product. It's, it's a molten plasma stream deposition material that's mechanically bonded. So the substrates are aluminum, steel, and stainless steel that we start with. Um, and then we have a specialized coating that can be applied, um, uh, steel, stainless steel, or, or aluminum. And we can actually put uh, stainless on aluminum, for example, when we need lighter weight but stronger um, bond strength. So we bond at over uh, 3,000 PSI, and we have achieved about a 60 uh, C Rockwell hardness. Um, to, so it's a file hard surface when it's all finished. So it wears uh, incredibly long. Now, give us some applications. Where, where would somebody find your type of product to be used? What type of oh, uh, locations? Goodness, 
goodness sakes, with 40 years of history, we have um, product on bridges in northern Wisconsin that has been there for decades. Uh, you can find us in Disney uh, Disneyland. You can find us in Times Square. Um, just about every uh, food and beverage manufacturer from a Tyson to a, to a Pilgrim's utilizes us in their, their uh, work areas. Um, you can even find us on nuclear submarines, uh, as well as many other uh, unique applications. It, it really is um, uh, anywhere you have slip and fall uh, opportunities. And of course, slip and falls are the number one or number two problem in every vertical market, every industry. Um, it has application. Now, you and I came to know each other through, I guess, the city of New York, Department of Transportation. Is that correct? That is correct. And give our audience a little background. How is it that you found NFSI and, and the whole story, the background story, if you will, about us and what we do in the world of floor safety? Yeah, so I think uh, we came to, uh, to know each other. We've been working on a number of different projects over time. We are the standard for the city of New York from uh, from flood control uh, uh, walkways to terminals to subway applications. And, um, and I know this, uh, Jeff on our team handled this directly with you guys, but I think it was with uh, one particular product that had an application that the, the client really needed to know if this was going to last. He, he, was, he was, so many products out there seemed to work well, uh, brand new, and in some cases within hours, days, weeks, uh, no longer provide the slip resistance. So we, our product was uh, went through the NFSI pro, uh, process to um, test, you know, high high uh, traction uh, after not only new but after 30 days, which was important to the client um, to be able to um, recognize that it was going to last in their application. Now, that application is one that there's going to have a lot of heavy foot traffic. Is that correct? As well as perhaps you know, objects being pulled across the surface, et cetera. That is correct, yes. And that's probably where the kind of rubber meets the road, no pun intended, but performance is really going to be demonstrated based on real world applications where lots and lots of people or lots and lots of objects are being pulled across the floor and the, and the, and the surface has to maintain its integrity, its coefficient of friction. Yes, yeah, so what's unique, uh, Russ, about our product is we create a, um, uh, uh, you know, literally thousands and thousands of asprites are called, which are those are basically think of metal peaks along the surface. And so uh, as they wear, they don't, they don't, they don't re reside or uh, rely on just one point. As they wear, they maintain their shape as they wear down. So even as a product wears with, with you know, thousands of people foot traffic every day, it maintains that coefficient of friction over time. Uh, and we have a number of cases where, where we've seen even after, after you know, uh, five, ten years of, of literally, you know, tens of thousands of, of traffics on a daily basis, um, still maintaining that coefficient of friction. So who's the mastermind behind this? Who, um, who figured this technology out? So it, uh, this process actually was uh, developed over 40 years ago, and Bill Molnar was the founder of the company. Um, Bill was, was a remarkable man. He was actually a, uh, in a rep business initially, um, brought a, a new idea uh, forward, wasn't, uh, wasn't accepted, so he decided to go all in. And his wife, who's a teacher, put in her, uh, put in her retirement money, and, and they went off on their own and started Slipknot, principally selling to the uh, automotive industry around Detroit, as well as uh, some of the heavy industrials. And over time, have um, found more and more applications. I think um, the big breakout came actually. You'll find this interesting uh, in the with the city of Los Angeles. They were having uh, struggles with all their underground vaults, with people slipping and falling on the streets. And the city of LA was in court almost every day with with five, six, eight million dollar lawsuits. And so PG&E adopted the standard of, of now putting um, slip knot on all their uh, vault covers. And have eliminated all those um, slip and fall injuries. So I found myself in Seattle not long ago walking just about eight, ten blocks and seeing six different surfaces on their different vault covers and, you know, watching people walk around vault covers that they could tell would be um, slippery. So Bill, really, that kind of helped um, uh, really launch uh, uh, the business. And um, uh, for 40 years, um, the, the, the breadth of the, the customers that Slipknot has worked with has grown. Um, not principally in the industrial uh, area, but also in the commercial area as well. And um, about uh, 
2018, uh, unfortunately, Bill passed and uh, the family decided um, uh, to, to um, look to sell the company. And that's when they partnered with um, uh, Victor Capital Partners and we became a part of Traction Technology Holdings. So I came on board uh, right at the end of 2020 uh, when that uh, took place. Um, it's interesting you say that back when I started my first company, Traction Plus, around 1990, um, mm -hmm. I would go to trade shows and I would see Slipknot um, there at various you know trade shows selling their product. And of course, I was in the chemical safety business, which kind of grew into floor matting, floor signs, footwear, et cetera. And so there was a certain parallel uh, between, I guess you can see our two companies um, back dating almost 40 years ago. Um, but the question I would always ask myself then, and I'm going to ask you now, is how is it you then educate your customer um, as to the difference between your product and diamond plate, given that everybody sees diamond plate? They, they use it all the time. You, can't, you can buy toolboxes at Home Depot with diamond plate on it. So there's this kind of subliminal message of, oh, that's the... That's the standard. That's the that's the product to use because it offers performance. And and how do you overcome that? I mean, in your marketing. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting you ask that because um, you know it, it to me I, I'm the same way as I, I can't believe that uh, that diamond plate is out there as a, a safety product because it's really a decorative product. Um, with our customers, you know, we we have a couple of different approaches, but principally we talk about uh, you know NFSI. Uh, uh, standards, how we meet those standards, what the differences are in performance. Generally, we have to divert a little bit to technical. We, we, we kind of fall into that. Do you understand how coefficient of friction works? You know, if you if you have a 10 pound weight and you apply 10 pounds, you know, if you have a weight and you apply 10 pounds to it, if it takes 10 pounds to start that weight moving, it's a 1.0. If it takes five pounds to start that weight moving, it's a 0.5. And what does that mean in terms of, of when you're walking and you encounter a, a surface that's that slick, uh, what that's going to do to you. So we start with kind of a little bit of a understanding of the science of a slip and fall, um, help them understand that 55% of all slip and falls are created through the uh, the surface that you're walking on. So we actually design into our walkways injury. And so uh, we then talk about how slip knot will maintain a, a 0.9 plus coefficient of friction, wet or dry, oily, or not as, as compared to another product. Um, I actually have a little hinky uh, uh, demo I do showing uh, a diamond plate actually in an in a oil bath versus um, our product in oil bath, uh, simple to show how, how much more slippery it's going to be uh, on that diamond plate surface. So the short answer is Russ, it's, it's really a, a process of helping them understand the engineering, the application of the product. Um, but most e and EHS experts, um, that have that understanding are quick to, to recognize that that diamond plate simply is not a safety product. So your customer is a safety professional, a risk manager. I mean, who's your primary? You know, when you when you're when you're promoting your product, are you speaking to safety professionals, maintenance people? Who who's your audience? Yeah. So so generally, what we find is particularly within our national account customers is that we have an end user, uh, we have a technical uh, buyer, and we have a um, a financial buyer and so oftentimes that eh and s person you know will take the uh, role of the end user buyer on behalf of the of the team uh the technical buyer might be the engineering or maintenance group that's looking at how am i going to install it how am i going to maintain it how is it going to work and then of course um uh because our process is a, a lot more significant than what you would get with a uh, with a a diamond plate product you know there's a financial difference in cost but when you recognize that one prevented slip and fall injury um, has huge returns on investment. Uh, generally, it doesn't take long for the customer to understand that it's a it's a it's a it's the right investment to make to to prevent injury within their facilities. You know, one of the questions I'm asked, and I'm certain you are as well, is um, could there be too much traction? I mean, you have such a high level of coefficient of friction. Is it is there applications where that would just be too much, meaning people would trip? Uh, over your product because of the traction level being too high. Yeah, we haven't had that uh, had that incidence uh, to my knowledge. Generally, a, a slip will occur when you're you're stepping from a higher coefficient of friction to a lower coefficient of friction. So when you step onto a slip knot, you're 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 very unlikely to have any kind of an incident. Um, when you step off of it, um, that's where you would need to be cautious because you're likely stepping to a lower coefficient of friction at that point. 
So um, generally, the trips are not an issue unless you have a, uh, a an elevation difference where you we, where you might be going from a platform changing levels, and if there's a, a little bit of a, a difference there in height, then then you can create a trip hazard. Um, but we're very careful when we help advise um, our customers um, how to how to do that. We have one one particular case where we had a ramp, um, and it it used to take. Uh, four people uh, to push this 2,000 pound pallet up the ramp. Um, now that we've installed our product, we have eliminated the need. The, 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 uh, the pallet jack itself will run up the, uh, up the ramp without any help. But we had, an, we had this, that problem where we had a little bit of a gap at the, um, at the uh, beginning of the ramp that we had to put in a special threshold um, so that the forks of the fork trucks and the pallets wouldn't hit when they went, when they went over. Mm-hmm. So that is a consideration that we take into account. Well, high traction and abrasive surfaces like those you manufacture always lead to the question of how do I clean this? Right. Uh, you can't mop uh, a highly abrasive or rough surface. So how do your customers maintain your product's cleanliness and sanitation? So that's a, a great segue. We've had, um, there's a couple of different approaches. Generally in the food and beverage industry, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, a hose down process using some kind of a, a foaming agent or a product uh, and then a wash down. We've had some, uh, you know, in a drier environment, it's really a little bit more difficult, but um, uh, we're right in the process of introducing a new product called Foothold that's actually a cleaning product um, with, a, with a device that will be utilized to, uh, uh, to, to act basically as if you think of a, uh, a carpet cleaning kind of device, right, where it'll spray, clean, and, and, uh, and uh, absorb up. So in those environments where you really can't wash down with a hose, um, it'll become a very effective way for, for our customers to be able to uh, uh, address specific areas. We've had actually, we've tested this in a couple areas where it's worked very well. Well, it's always where the rubber meets the road and that is performance and you're selling a safety product. Um, obviously that's your primary uh, benefit to your customers or buying safety. And you mentioned a moment ago, Bill, and I'm going to ask you to go a little bit more in detail. Tell us about some of your success stories, some of the uh, case studies, applications where you were able to uh, successfully prevent slips and falls uh, once your product was installed um, and another product was removed. Yeah, we had, and there's a number of them, Russ, but I, you know, one that stands out is we had a, a, a customer, um, up in uh, Wisconsin area, they're a, they're a meat processor company, and they had um, a diamond plate platform uh, issue that they were having injuries on. And they, they in good consciousness, were very conscientious about their, their employees. They replaced it with, um, you've probably seen the serrated um, edged type materials, uh, mm-hmm. which is also can be incredibly slippery. Um, and they had, after they did that, thinking they were doing the right thing for their employees, they had two more injuries, one very serious the guy almost lost a, a thumb on that serrated edging um, that we reached that reached out to, uh, to us. And we finally we went up and took a look at them, helped them design the proper solution, installed it. And again, this was about two years ago uh, or a year and a half ago. And since then, we've had no no slip, uh, slip or fall incidents on those platforms. Mm. So that that's one particular area. Um, there's you know, there's many, many where. Um, you know, I can talk about a customer that, uh, you know, we, we are the standard and, and people that have used us, they, they absolutely love it. Um, and we had one case where a customer had actually, the contractor switched products and installed the wrong product. And the owner basically made him tear it out and replace it with Slipknot because he knew the, of the performance differences. So we have many, many of those customers and testimonials that will talk to that long-term performance of our product. Now, you do ladder rungs and stairs um, as well. There's um, various products. Here's one that we tested a while ago. It's kind of a paint-on abrasive. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not certain. I think it's an epoxy. Uh, Very Mm -hmm. popular. Uh, This is a ladder rung. But you have a a product that can also be used on ladder rungs and steps and stairs. Is that correct? We can can actually do solid uh, rounds for people that want to build the whole stairway. We, tip, we have a, a, a typical uh, U-channel uh, that's coated that can be uh, welded to make a, uh, a ladder immediately OSHA compliant that um, really performs quite well. Uh, in that particular industry, we see some changes coming where we think um, 
uh, the diameter is going to be increased and, and we, we see the opportunity to do more um, uh, prefab round and coated surfaces. But the, the key again, Russ, is how long uh, the life lasts. It, it, it doesn't matter in a ladder application. It can be literally there for decades and still provide that, that high traction surface that we're looking for. You know, I was going through your website the other day and I noticed you have a very unique product. Mm -hmm. And that's handrails, guardrails, mm -hmm. um, the handholds, um, which one doesn't necessarily think would need a high level of traction, uh, say, versus the ramp that you're walking on or stairway. But um, tell us a little bit about why you are manufacturing and, and who are you selling the, the Slipknot uh, protective, I guess, handrails and, and guardrails to? Typically, what we'll find is those, those are going to be for utility access, access type points, industrial customers that, you know, maybe it's a very steep ramp or they want, uh, 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 they have a traditional um, high step, you know, kind of the, the very tall but flat surface and they want to provide extra uh, three point contact. So usually those clients might be wearing gloves, um, but typically we would see th those applications in uh, uh, the mining or the, or the uh, oil and gas or some of those industries um, or anywhere where there might be a unique uh, utility access, for example. Uh, I actually had a project a number of years ago that dealt with a railroad car. Okay. And the yeah. um, conductors, the engineer who would have to grab a handrail to get in and out of the, um, you know, the, the, the engine. And uh, they were just smooth aluminum or steel uh, handrails. And so what you're saying is that's kind of your market is going into the industries where a worker is having to hold on to a handrail or guardrail uh, to lift themselves up. So it's weight bearing. They're wearing gloves. That's another good point. So there's an abrasive quality, but it kind of bites into their gloves. I, I would think like with, with, with this product, I mean, I always ask the question, how would somebody climb up a ladder rung where they have to hold on to this? I mean, that would really hurt your hands right. to grab onto that, you know, real abrasive surface. Um, but your product actually would apply to, I guess, the railroad industry and other industries where people are, are walking or having to hold on to and step on to uh, ladder rungs or uh, spikes, uh, cleats, those types of things. Is that, is that correct? That is correct. And, and actually, if you go through OSHA ladder training, they'll tell you that the proper way to utilize a hand, uh, use a ladder is actually to grab the vertical parts of the ladder and not grab the horizontal part which is where our product would, would absolutely work well is, is to coat the, the vertical portions of the ladder as well as the horizontal. And now you've got at all times three very high, tr high uh, traction areas that you're in contact with. Well, the NFSI does not have a um, way of testing <laughs> uh, handrails yet uh, or grab bars, however you describe your product. But it seems like there definitely is a market uh, for those. And I would go so far to think that most of your products are industrial you're not really selling a lot of residential products so we actually have started to expand into kind of the commercial area where um, for example um, uh, we're on the group purchasing organization was premier into the healthcare market um, they actually if you look at a campus hospital campus i was at a an ashy show uh, american society of hospital engineers and had two different engineers come up to me and say, we just built this brand new parking ramp and I had a serious slip and fall injury, you know, two months ago. And I had another one said, yeah, we have them about once a quarter and we just write a check for $70,000 because um, of these happening. So uh, besides there, I mean, you know, they usually have loading ramps, they have uh, stairwells, they have mechanical rooms. Um, we're actually looking at, have the ability to do more decorative approaches so for example with one hospital right now we're looking at a uh, at a um, a banner kind of uh setup on 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 around the, the edge of the entryway to basically provide a safe walkway when it's raining or slippery out um, and we do this for a number of different customers so we that's part of our mission is to develop and, and push this into a broader uh, commercial sector um, that there are applications. Um, the residential, it's probably a little bit farther stretch, but uh, we've even been, you know, you can go into Home Depot and buy a, a diamond plate. You know, we'd like to see, uh, you know, Slipknot as an option for homeowners to buy if they are really wanting to have a work area that they want to have safe. I've been speaking with Bill Davidson, CEO of Slipknot. 
uh, leading manufacturer of slip and fall prevention industrial uh, plating and, and uh, materials. Uh, before I let you go, Bill, one last question, and that is how is it you got into this this business? How did how, how did you find your way here? So interesting journey. I um, uh, I came, uh, my background is actually more in the HVAC world where I was saving energy for customers. And now I, I, I really am excited about saving, uh, not only saving injuries, but saving lives. And um, I came uh, through the, um, when the Molnars decided to um, uh, sell the company, uh, I was asked because of my commercial background, if I'd be interested. And uh, I've just thoroughly enjoyed um, the last almost two years now that I've been here. Um, the team is, is fabulous. We just celebrated um, our two, uh, two years of no lost time accidents in our own plant. And so we took the whole company out to a ball game, uh, Detroit Tigers game uh, and dinner and had, a, had just a fabulous time. So that whole safety culture is one that um, I truly believe in. And I, I love the idea of being able to um, um, be a big, a big factor in, in preventing injuries and saving lives. Well, first of all, let me thank you for doing what you do um, as a member of your of the family of safety, the safety culture. And, and that's what it is. I mean, there are people who value safety and are willing to invest in it to prevent lives from uh, being taken or injury to be harmed, or for just, as you mentioned, costs. Uh, safety pays big dividends. Uh, preventing a slip and fall or a trip and fall event could really not only save a person's life, but could save the company a lot of money. And um, in the end of the day, uh, that's what the market wants. So uh, thanks for joining us today, uh, Bill, it's a pleasure speaking with you and getting to to finally meet you. And um, uh, anything we can do to help you promote the benefits of your product, we certainly would look forward to uh, to doing. So um, thanks again for joining us. Thank you, Russ. Very much enjoyed it. Well, there you have it. So when we're talking about diamond plating, you may want to think twice about what exactly you're doing and how you're going to be applying that product because there are Better alternatives, alternatives that work um, in a way that actually do what they're designed to do, and that's to prevent slips and falls. So with that in mind, this is America's Slip and Fall Guy, Ross Kenzior, thanking you for listening to Safety Matters. Safety Matters.